Welcome to my fourth video on position analysis. Today we're going to look at an endgame. And the endgame is from the book The 100 Endgames You Must Know, a workbook from Jesus de la Villa. And I think pawn endings are really important, uh, not only because you get them a lot when you are in the rating range between 1000 and 1500, but also for knowing whether you can uh, exchange into an, a pawn ending and to be able to assess uh, whether that pawn ending is winning or losing or a draw. And uh, let's look at the general framework for position analysis. So in general we have orientation, calculation, evaluation and then verifying the calculation. Um, with this end game of course the number of uh, uh, branches is not as wide as when you have a middle game position, so it's quite limited. Um, but we are will be doing calculation, and part of the calculation is the visualization and being clear about uh, uh, the line as it progresses. And then, of course, the evaluation. And important is also the second bullet, find moves that fit with the goal using the mini concepts. In this case, it's prior knowledge. And then, of course, uh, really thinking about whether you consider the strongest reply of your opponent. So we're going to start with the prior knowledge to solve this puzzle. So I'm switching to chess space. And the question in this position is, um, who is winning and does it matter who is to move? So for uh, a lot of players, they would go um, about key squares and they would say the key squares are d7, e7 or f7 or they would talk about opposition and say well it depends on uh, who is to move and uh, who has the opposition but in this case white is always winning so if black is to move in this position and black plays king g8, white plays king g6, king f8, king f6 and then after King e8, we push our pawn and we promote. So it is of course possible for white to do it incorrectly. So if we go back. So in this position after King g8, um, King f6 draws after King a8 because black gets stalemated. So this is when black is to move in the starting position. And if white is to move, it's even simpler. We play king f5, and after king g, king g8, we get into the same position as we just had, and we have a winning endgame. So this is our prior knowledge that is critical to solve the puzzle that we have on the right side. So let's now go to the puzzle. And the question is, can white force an entry for his king with queen e5? So white was looking at this position and was thinking, how do I get to g7 with the king so the queen and the king can together attack the pawn on g7 and I can advance my pawns. And at the current, in the current situation, uh, f6 and g6 um, are not available for the king and the king cannot go to the e-file because of the rook. So here the question is how to assess the pawn ending after queen e5. So it of course starts with queen e5, a rook takes e5, and we have to decide whether we take with the pawn or whether we take with the king. I think for a lot of players it would be more logical to take with the pawn to create a, and a passed pawn that can go to the other side uh, without being obstructed by an opponent's pawn. And if we verify it after king, G, king takes e5, so queen e5, rook takes e5, king e5, the most uh, direct way for black to force the draw would be g5. And after h takes g5, h takes g5, um, f5, g4, can you see who is promoting first? 
and whether the resulting end game is a draw. So both sides promote at the same time. So let's go to the variation. So we have a rook takes e5, king takes e5. So our our gut feel that we are having about this position is that it is a draw and that proves to be correct. And uh, so we are going back to the starting position after queen e5, rook takes e5, and we are thinking what will happen if the pawn takes there, f takes e5. So we have queen e5, a rook takes e5, f takes e5. That's our position that we are looking at. How do you think black will respond? And of course the first thing you could black could try to do is say I'm going to block try to block the king and the pawn advance with my king and play king g8. So besides the position that we just had on hand with um, uh, that we discussed as prior knowledge to this position another important aspect of course is that the king should support the advance of the pawn and shield of the enemy king. So there are different ways to uh, to evaluate this position, but the most logical way for many players would to play king e6, king d7, and then e5, e6, e7, e8. Can you visualize who promotes first? So the line would be queen e5, rook takes e5, f takes e5, and then king g8, king e6, g5, h takes g5, h takes g5, king d7, g4, e6, g3, e7, g2, e8, queen. So white queens first, and what is very important, that white queens with a check. So I'll repeat the line one more time. Queen e5, rook takes e5, f takes e5, king g8. Black would like to play king f8, king e8. King e6, g5, h takes g5, h takes g5. King d7, preventing the blockade of the black king. g4, e6, g3, e7, g2, e8, queen with check. And then the queen can pick up the pawn on g2. So we have found a winning continuation. Let me now show it on the board. I hope you practice your visualization. And white promotes with check. So if we look to the third step of analyzing a position, it's the verification and considering whether we really consider the strongest move of black and whether black has any other replies. So after queen e5, rook takes e5, f takes e5, black could play instead of going to the back rank and allowing a check after promotion play immediately g5. So queen e5, rook takes e5, f takes e5, and then g5. h takes g5, h takes g5. And now king takes g5, and black plays king g7. Can you see, based on the analysis we did before, what the winning move is in that position? So, to repeat for the visualization, queen e5, rook takes e5, f takes e5, g5, h takes g5, h takes g5, king takes g5, king g7. And if we go back to our prior knowledge, 
and what we did before we were in this position we now remember that e6 is winning because after king g8 king g6 king f8 king f6 king e8 e7 king d7 king f7 wins so let's now go to the board queen e5 rook takes e5 f takes e5 g5 A lot of black players would say, I have the opposition, it's a draw. And reach out across the board to shake hands. But as the white player, you would say not so fast, because you know that this is a winning position. And after king g8, you don't play king f6 with a draw, but you know that you have to play king g6. And after king f8, you obtain a winning position. That was my video for today. I hope that you liked the practice of the visualization, um, the simple endgame concept with the prior knowledge and um, the analysis and verification that we did for all the lines. Thank you for watching. I hope you subscribe and I hope to see you with my next video.